Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Coach Scott Green is going to be the guest tonight on the Barbarian Hour. Coach Green, newly named assistant coach for the Army, the West Point, the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, the Black Knights, the guy who's going to help run the show and do a lot of the recruiting, Scott Green, Coach Green, uh, also the former head coach at Wyoming Seminary where they won multiple national prep tournament titles. They won the Ironman. They won everything under the sun that they went to at one point or another. Coach Green helped be the architect of that. Coach Green's on the Barbarian Hour tonight. Coach Green, how you doing? I am doing well. What's going on, guys? Well, you know, not much. We're just, uh, you know, I've been seeing a lot of America's team, hashtag America's team, and I want to know what it's going to take for America's team to jump levels with Scott Green on the staff. I mean, I'm fired up. You got me fired up about West Point wrestling, but, but how's America's team doing right now, West Point? America's team is doing very well. Um, West Point is uh, it's, it's a special place uh, out of there and to, to be able to set foot on campus every day is is, is an honor um, and I'm excited about being part of uh, getting that team to the next level like you just talked about you know you're at the stage right now where you know you're you're how many years into teaching you've already done some college wrestling you know you've You've been around the block. You've seen it. You've been on a D1 staff before. Bingington was D1 when you were on the staff, right, with Popolizia? Yeah, right? correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just the beginning of it coming back. Yeah, yep. So this is not anything new to you. You built a, you know, a prep national powerhouse at Wyoming Seminaries. Who'd you take? Was it John Green? Who did you take the reins from at Sun? Uh, John Gordon. John, John Gordon. Gordon. That's who it was. And his son was Mickey, right? Yeah, correct. Yep. Okay. So you took the reins from him. They were pretty good. They were a top five, top 10 team parentally, but you got them to the next level. What do you mm. think you did differently than Coach Gordon to get Sam to the next level, to beat Blair consistently, okay, beat Melbourne Prep, who's obviously improved a ton. You know, you have all the prep schools who are yeah. excellent, right? Mm -hmm. How did you guys get to that level? How were you able to make Wyoming Seminary jump the levels that you made them jump? Well, I think it's maximizing your 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 resources. Um, it's it's taking a look at at what you're good at, at what you do well, and and really lean into that uh, to to be able to take the things that made Wyoming Seminary special. Um, that John Gordon planted the seeds to um, when it was in its infancy as as a a wrestling program but don't forget like wyoming seminary's got some tradition in wrestling that went way back too so connecting those two two kind of bridges together and using all of that to to tell the story of the the institution and how wrestling blends into that those, those are the type of things that i think really got people excited about it and and when people are excited around a, a, a program um, good things tend to happen. Kids want to go there. Parents want to be all in. Administration wants to be all in. So all that that factor together, helping build that that car. I just got to drive it at that point in time, and and and, and not screw it up, not smash it up, right? So I think that's kind of what we did there. Um, that's kind of what we did at Binghamton um, before that uh, a, a little bit, and I think I'm charged with that here now um to to come in and take some of that skill set and apply some of those things that i learned at the previous two stops and help kevin get get america's team um to the next level we're excited about it man it's going to be a great ride and so essentially you take this place of where shock was at or what, what's your position you know what do you yeah. do from binghamton binghamton and wyoming well, I mean, sam right what you took from them you know speak a little more on what you took from that and what you're bringing, you know, to fill that spot. So I am the associate head coach, um, and I'm I'm excited about that. Uh, 
and I think some of the the specific things that that I think I'll bring to the table is is program building, right? Um, there's a pretty good team in that room right now. There's there's 42 guys that are that are that are soldiers that are that are ready to go in and and, and, and scrap every day, uh, and so it's the stuff that kind of is around the program that's going to get them to the next level. So we're going to, we're going to work hard on, on building support in the local community. We're going to build hard on reconnecting alumni and strengthening alumni ties to, to the program. And we're going to work hard on, on, I don't want to say rebranding, but I want to say educating people um, as to what a, what a West Point wrestler, is right um there's this kind of preconceived notion that a kid has to be like this 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 and this to to go to a a military academy and and we're gonna blow that up a little bit right um because not everybody that's at west point came from the same place and is cut from the same cloth some of them came here for a particular reason and you know they're 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 figuring it out they're making it fit into what they want to do um here so like we're going to use all of those things to to give people a little bit more of a peek inside uh, what's going on here so that they can get excited about it and, and we can really propel this program into the national spotlight. It's where it deserves to be. I talked to Coach Colat in May, and he talked about the difference in recruiting for him from Campbell to Navy, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you were doing a lot of national recruiting at – some right sure. to, to yep. build the teams that you had to uh what changes from some to west point for you as far as recruiting i i, I get you're recruiting middle schoolers there right and high schoolers they're right not, they're not they're not 14 right um <laughs> what's the difference talk about the difference between recruiting at sure. west point and recruiting at uh some obviously you know um at at, at some you're recruiting against something that's free, right? So you're trying to convince families to pay $57,000 a year to come to Wyoming Seminary or whatever, you know, their, their, their contribution as a family would be via the financial aid formula, right? Um, and their alternative is just go to their public school, which might have a really, really good wrestling program um, and not pay a dime, right? Or maybe instead of coming to Sam, the whole family is going to relocate and go to a school that's that's got a good wrestling tradition. And that's not going to cost, cost a lot of money, right? So everyone who you're recruiting at West Point is probably going to college um, and, and, and probably wants to wrestle there. So... You know, it's kind of the flip side now because West Point is free, right? Um, you get the appointment, you come here, and you don't pay anything. You 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 pay it back in service. So that's the difference. It's kind of turned on its head. Where before I was trying to convince families to to part with money to come to an institution that I still feel is a, a transformative place, um, Wyoming Seminary as opposed to, to, to going and, and doing the free route and, and probably having a good experience there. And now, you know, we're, we're talking to kids who might have options that are going to be partial scholarships in some places. And, and, and we're offering the opportunity to have your education paid for um, and your collateral is you're going to, you're going to serve your country. Um, so it's kind of put down its head, like I said, um, and it's, it's interesting and it's, it's, it's great conversations having with, with young men um, who are trying to figure out what the next step in their life is and, and really just kind of showing them that wrestling's a part of this decision, but you're going to the, 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 the premier leadership institution in the world, um, West Point. I mean, you can't, I, I'd have a hard time thinking that anyone could debate that right i mean you look at some of the people that graduated from here they're the people you read about in your history books right um so uh they're they're enlightening conversations that you're having with kids they're you're learning a lot about the 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 young men that you're talking to um and it's 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 pretty awesome thing to do 
it's such a different thing, right? Like we talk about that and you talk about earning, earning and, and, and the way that people are paying. Okay. So it's deceptive. You're paying through service. That's what I don't think a lot of people get about the service academies. And at West Point, you pay with service, right? Yeah. You, you're, you are you are paying with service to your country and you're getting an education on par with Cornell, Stanford, Princeton. And, and that's like, that's not up for debate. It's that quality of an education. And the crazy thing about uh, what you guys do at West Point is there's no, there's no, uh, no gap year. There's no, there's no semester off. They have to take all the core classes every semester is what I've been told. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Cause so you have 15 hours and then you have yeah. to balance all the other things that come along with leadership and being a future officer. Yep. It's incredible to me, but you're paying with service. Mm -hmm. When you t go into every kid's room and money's not the issue, right? And 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 the higher they go up, the, the further along they get, they get paid a stipend more and more freshmen is, is less, you know, freshmen's the least, senior stipends get more than freshmen. Sure. That's the other thing. They're getting a stipend on top of everything, room, board, tuition, and I don't think a lot of people understand that about West Point, right? Well, yeah, not only that, but, I mean, you're walking into, I mean, it's service, right? So you have to, to, to understand that, but you're walking into some, some probably the highest guaranteed job placement of any college graduate um, anywhere, right? Um, because that's all kind of laid out for you for those five years, right? So, like, if you think... There's, there's a lot of jobs where you graduate. I mean, sometimes I look at guys that are, are wrestling in college and they've moved around a little bit and I, and I worry about, I'm like, are they going to be living in a van down by the river after their eligibility? Uh, right. Um, most point grads don't, don't, don't have that issue. They're moving into a, a career. Right. Um, and if they, if they, if they love it and they want to make a, themselves into a, a military career guy, the opportunities are there, but if not, they do their, their five years and all the skills that they've learned on those, those jobs are, are transferable to, to the public sector. So the, 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 the way that these kids leave, um, prepared, uh, you know, they're, they're, the, the kid who's 22 years old finishing up school at West Point is different than the kid who's 22 years old finishing up school just about anywhere else, I would say. Um, you know, um, the service academies uh, obviously are, are all going to be similar, but we feel pretty good about our product um, because we have to produce kids that are, I mean, like, like, Winning is important. Um, getting out on the road, competing is important. All of the above. Yes, we're Division One athletics. We're going to have a packed football stadium on Saturday. All that's all that's important. But our primary job is to prepare. In in our, in our case, forty five dudes to to be officers in the United States Army when they when they leave us. You know, and and wrestling's a part of that. You talk about product, right? We're on the Barbarian Hour, based out of Ohio. Deb and I are Ohio guys, right? Yeah. Two, your, two your captains, right, are Ohio guys, J.K. Brown and Ben Sullivan. Absolutely. Talk about them a little bit. I mean, if you want to – there'd be no question um, if you came into our wrestling room, and, and this happens because we have visitors in there all the time. If you walked in that room and, and, and said – who's the leader of this team, those two guys would, it would take you 10 minutes to figure it out um, because that's what they are. You know, the way they carry themselves, um, the way they speak to the younger guys on the team, um, they, they've got to figure it out. Right. Um, and, and so just the presence um, and they're both big dudes too. So like you know, 197 heavyweight captains, um, that's, that's bodes well for our big guys. Right. So um the, the the presence the the their stature what they bring to to the practice room and every aspect of their 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 life at West Point is 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 just proof of the transformation that that kids undergo while they're here okay I mean we're we're, we're getting a couple Ohio guys to that level you know we're doing something right um, from a Pennsylvania New York guy uh, but uh, yeah um, it's uh, it's 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 special to watch those guys um, you know uh, there's no and, and and I felt this way at other places I've been too but 
they are looking in the eye, shake your hand, um, you know, comfortable in conversations with adults. Uh, they are just, just they're, they're future leaders. That's what they're here to do is to, to do that. And I think I tweeted out the other day, you know, like imagine, you know, being, being chosen, answering that call, being here, wanting to be, you know, that person that, 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 serves their country and then imagine on top of that you're the captain of one of the best teams on campus like man um that's that's pretty awesome you guys are standing on it's legendary hollow ground where you guys are like you said it you know to go there every day it's a legend it's everybody in the, the history books as you guys were just talking i've been scanning the alumni <laughs> and i did this with shuck when, she, when we did shuck when he was on the we talked shuck and, and you're standing in the backs of giants. It's incredible. I mean, just let me give, let me give you some. I know you know him, but Robert E. Lee, uh, arguably the greatest military tactician in the history of humans. Um, the only reason the Confederacy had a chance in the, in the Civil War, um, in, in my humble opinion, uh, Robert E. Lee was incredible. Okay. Um, Ulysses S. Grant, U.S. Grant, United States President, uh, Civil War General, Douglas MacArthur. Mike Pompeo, George Armstrong Custer, Al Edgar Allan Poe, football team named after one of his short stories. Uh, Dwight David Eisenhower, <clears throat> kind of a kind of a big deal that guy. George S. Patton, a little bit of a messiah complex, but uh, obviously one of the greatest American generals in uh, in history. Stonewall Jackson, William Tecumseh Sherman. Jefferson Davis. I know that Jared doesn't know who Jefferson Davis is. Jared, oh, on you out, Jared. I, I, yeah, but Jared, he was the president of the Confederacy. Uh, George McClellan. Um, John J. Pershing. He was a madman. <laughs> a total maniac. Uh, oh, Petraeus. Check that. Oh, Ambrose Burnside. No way. I missed him on the way through. Look at the burns on that guy. He's crazy. But you're standing on the backs of giants. You're standing on the backs of legends. Um, yep. I, I just don't think it's too hard of a sell because when I look at it, it's just like I want my kids to go there. I'm not going to lie to you. My, my sons can go there. I want them to go there. If they can go to Navy, I want them to. If they're set up for any of the three of you guys, you know, you three service academies, I'm yep. in, man. I'm in. Sign me up. I don't know yep. if I'm going to be able to convince my wife. Mm-hmm. But it is the premier leadership institution on the planet Earth throughout human history that's an actual fact correct accurate <laughs> it's yeah. not up for debate yeah What's Listen, like? I, get to, I get to go out and i get to stand at trophy point every day um and i get to take the same view of the hudson that benedict arnold and george washington took you know k ward k, k ward dropped it on a recruit the other day he's like look he's like what other co-? he's like i can guarantee you this where you're standing right now george washington rode his horse past here every day for for a while he, and, and, and the kid was just like oh, oh my god you know like holy cow like i get to stand there every day um and and yeah all those guys you're talking about their names are everywhere and and, and maybe you're you're 1920 you, you're like yeah okay i live in the lee barracks i you know there's a statue of of, of Patton on oh, campus and, and 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 let me tell you this the Patton story is his, his statue's right by the library um Patton was a much a student uh, and his statue is of the library. Uh, it's facing away from the library, and the running joke on, on, on campus is they can go back and check like logs. And he didn't spend all that much time inside the library, so when they put the statue up, they put him with his back to the library, um, <laughs> looking away from it. Uh, I think Buster was last in his class, you know, like like just like little fun facts like that that you learn every day at this this place when you look around and and man it like game of thrones fans it's like winterfell man it's like castles like you you are going to school and in in, in castles in on a mountain and it's the, the the rock bound highland home it's 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 surreal every single day it's a fortress never been breached yeah <laughs> it's literally a fortress you you yeah. tweeted something or not? I'm like, yeah, it literally looks like that's a fortress because that's a fortress because that's what that is. Indeed. That's what's wild about the whole thing is just it's such hollow ground, man. It's incredible to me just to look at that list of alumni and that yeah. and listen, I scraped the surface is the wild thing about it, right? Yeah. 
For sure. Yeah. I, no, those are the guys who like, you know, made headlines, but man, like other, other people that have here, the contributions that they've made to, to history and, and, and to our country, they're innumerable, right? Like, like you can't, it, it's, it's, you can't even quantify how important this institution has been to, to our, our nation um, over, over the years, starting with, you know, um, the, the reason it was at West Point and, and, and the, the battles in New York and stopping the British coming down, like, like it's, it's a key point. And, and, you know, I'm a New York guy, so I know a little bit about it, but man, you get kids that come all over the country here and they're like, what? Like, holy cow. They're, they're, they're like shocked, even though they think they know, they don't know what they don't know. Amazing. Totally amazing, Scott. I mean, yeah. I could sit here and just like look at that and just and, and discuss that all, all day. But biggest adjustment for you. Have you moved yet? Kind of. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I got a place. I got a, a, an apartment close to, to post. Um, my son's a senior at SEM. Um, so he'll finish up there. Uh, it's only about two hours away. Um, so we're doing some commuting on the weekends uh, and things like that. But I'm in town. I'm in the room every day. Um, I'm in, in, in the office every day uh you know working hard so you know um i, I actually want i did the same thing at sem so it's deja vu all over again i guess uh but uh you know i did the same thing at sem from binghamton where i kind of came out um a year ahead and you know um we'll we'll, we'll play it by year uh, in terms of what happens next um in, in where we wind up living and stuff like that but i'm here um and spend some time with the, the the kids at Sam when they came back. Um, spent some time with Cornell uh, last weekend. So, you know, putting that a little bit in the rearview mirror. It's going to be a place that that you know um, holds a lot of great memories for me, and I got a lot of pride in what I was able to accomplish there. But um, you know, full speed ahead here. How's lacrosse going? How's Laxdad going? Uh, you know, um, we're, we're figuring it out. Got a little fall ball going for Kieran. Um, he's enjoying it still. And that's, that's all that matters, right? Um, something that, that, that he loves. And that's one of the things I preach with, with my student athletes. I'm like, you got to love what you're doing. And, and my only coaching rules with him have, have usually been like posture and attitude, um, be coachable. And, uh, you know, uh, as long as you're doing that, we're never going to have a conversation that, that, that leads in a bad direction. We're going to have good conversations, but, uh, you know, that's, that's as long as that's the, the, the criteria that, that we're meeting, we're, we're in good shape with lacrosse. We'll see if it's going to be a college thing or not. Uh, but it's, it's, it's going well. Has he picked a school yet? Nope. Um, he's got this crazy idea in his head. He wants to check out some school in the state next to Pennsylvania, uh, the Buckeyes or, or something like that. Um, so, you keep digging on Ohio. You get a lot of Ohio guys on, yeah, on the roster, though, right? I mean, they got to be. Yeah, Ohio. Chuck, Chuck did a nice job mining the Buckeye State um, and getting guys here. So, um, you know, like, like if you got guys from Ohio and Pennsylvania on your team, you're going to be able to compete. And and so that's that's those are the places you start, right, uh, for the most part. Um, you get individuals from all over the place, but when you're looking for that guy that you know that can be tough and and, and step into a D1 room and be able to handle the workload um, and and to get in there and fight and compete every day, you got you got to start there, you know. Right. You're a risk taker, man. I mean, not many people in your position who had a prep who built a prep powerhouse wants to jump off the cliff into the D1 shark waters. I mean, it, it's it's crazy what to me what you've done, but I also want to commend you. You know, Martin Floriani calls it jumping off the cliff. You know, and shout out, nice shirt by the way. Can I see? Can you give me a quick? Yeah, we got we got the, we're rocking the fin. We're rocking the fin. I like that. But you know, Martin talks about jumping off the cliff. What you're doing to me is jumping off the cliff. Tell me how you, you the conversations with your wife, if you don't mind. You know, if that's too personal, that's fine. But how do you convince? How do you sell this to your wife? Your kids a senior at SEM, where you built this national powerhouse, and you and you leave when your kids a senior, but you jumped off the cliff. Is it jumping off the cliff to you, or, or am I just too conservative? I'm a cliff jumper, right? I mean, sure, yeah. I mean, I could have had that same conversation. Like my wife is from Binghamton area. Um, 
we owned a home in Binghamton. Um, you know, like Christ, we had just taken a team from the dead, the, the Bearcats buried. I mean, like buried, like canceled, no program. And we had just put guys on the podium and placed 14th in the country. And Pat and Dennis, you know, like it's going well. And, and I was like, yeah, well, hon, um, I know, I know you kind of lived here your whole life. And there's this, this, this place in, uh, Pennsylvania. It's not, it's not in Wyoming and, and, you know, our, our kid's not going to have to be a priest. It's only about an hour and a half away, Wyoming Seminary. Uh, I think we should move there. You know, uh, so that was kind of like, oh, well, let's talk about it a little bit. And, yeah, I mean, like, why leave a D1 job uh, to to go to a prep school um, at that point in time? But, I mean, this is kind of crazy, and it's, it's really I, – I consider myself kind of a cerebral kind of guy. Um, sometimes it's just an emotional decision. Like we set foot on campus at Wyoming seminary and we walked around and we knew that, you know, the, the opportunity for both my kids to go to a school like that was too much to pass up. We had to just throw caution into the wind and, and let's go. Right. And, and so like I've been at West Point, I known K-Dub for, for a while. I talked to him about potential job a few years before that. So there's a little bit of time in the making, but when Jen came on campus, we drove up past the first freaking castle and she's like, Oh, you're going to work here. Like, <laughs> you know, like it. <laughs> she's like, yeah. And, and, you know, she was, she's like, you, you you're going to work here. There's, there's, there's really not much conversation to be had, is there? You know, um, but it, it, it was, it was, you know, my kids were all for it too. They were, they were excited. Um, you know, Ke- Kevin Ward said it the other day, you know, the, and, and, and it really hit me. And I think I've heard just about everything and I don't consider myself to be a guy who's surprised by a lot of things, but he said, there's, there's more United States senators than there are division one, um, head coaches. So, no, you can complain about your job. You can th- talk about and, and, and think about the, the the obstacles and the hard parts. But, you know, you get to you get to show up every day and be one of, you know, 78, I guess, 76 ish guys to get the opportunity to to lead a division one wrestling team. And, and, you know, I'm thinking the same thing for me. Like I get to be. You know, associate head coach, it, 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 there, there's more U.S. senators than there are associate division one wrestling coaches. So, duh, right? Yeah. So you change your life around. You, you sell a house, you buy a house, you, you move some stuff um, and you change your zip code, all, all that stuff. It's kind of crazy um, to, to do it uh, again. But. I get to live in another cool place um, and, and, and learn about another cool institution every day and, and, and share that with, with people who uh, are close to me, who are important to me and share that with people who, who it might be the thing that changes their life too. So, you know, it was a tough decision. Yeah. Um, let's be honest, the team that was coming back at Wyoming seminary might've been the best team of the entire time that I was there. Um, with all the kids that are coming back. And those were hard conversations to have with student athletes that I love. Um, but, you know, one of them said to me that this is, this was profound. This like punched me in the face. He's like, what you preach to us every day. You got to use your, your talents in wrestling to open doors that might not otherwise be open. He's like, I'd respect you less if you didn't take the job. That's pretty cool. Right. High school kids said that to you. <laughs> Well, the A, yeah, um, it shows that they're freaking listening to you because sometimes you wonder if they are, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but B, like the fact that he's processed it that much and is like, duh, like green, like this, is, like use your wrestling talent to give you more opportunities, duh, like yeah, go, go, we're, we're going to be fine, you know? Uh, you, you, you've done everything you can, um, but you got to do – do what's best for, for, for you too. So yeah, that was pretty wild. Yeah, I like, I believe you shared that on your Rockfin, you know, you spoke of Rockfin, right? What is it? Go green on Rockfin. Go green. Yeah. yeah something like that. Yep. Yeah. Com- com- <laughs> completely, <laughs> com- completely, <laughs> completely opposite. Is that right? It's quick, uh, deep thoughts, right? Like you said, cerebral and yeah, completely opposite, 
opposite of what Zeb brings to the table, right, Zeb? <laughs> I'm not a thinker. I'm not a thinker like this man is. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie, and I can't put the pen to the paper like the man does either. I like but to listen, read quick hitters. Though. I actually don't read a ton. I read your stuff. Zeb brings so much raw, genuine emotion, um, and, sure. and and I think, you know, um, I've got some of that too. Uh, I ain't bleeding it like he is. Um, it's not on my sleeve as much, but. When I'm feeling my best, it's when I'm 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 feeling that right. Like when I'm I'm walking on West Point, looking around, being like, "Damn, I get to work here every day." That that's the most kind of genuine feeling every day. Zeb, I feel the same as Zeb. I just don't 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 blurt it out as much as he does. <laughs> <laughs> you got a, gir- a governor. You got a governor <laughs> like a regulator, right? Like a throttle regulator. I don't really have that. Hey. My filter ain't broke. My filter ain't broke. No, no. When you <laughs> watch the Shane Sparks episode, just had Shane Sparks on. Yeah. Oh man, there was a lot of energy in that one. There's yeah. A, there was a lot of yeah. energy in that one. Hey, That's what I if, I'm in the room, if I'm in the room with you two for an hour, I'm exhausted. I'm just like, okay, this was a lot of fun, but I'm gonna sleep well tonight. <laughs> That's what I told Shane. I was like, I I want to jump on this show, but I feel like I'm gonna bring the energy level on. I'll I'll just yeah. let them do. <laughs> I told Shane, nothing against you, Shane. I mean, dude, he's just so jacked up, and just so, and I learned, I have so much more respect for Shane Sparks. He told me his story, you know, his story is an awesome story and a, a lot of of hard learning at a young age for Shane. You know, he had mm-hmm. a son when he was 19 years old. I did yeah. not know that about Shane. You know, and and uh, his kids in the uh, in the Air Force, and he just told me a lot. Of, I, I learned a lot from Shane and. Those are awesome lessons when you can learn from someone like that who's a genuine guy mm-hmm. who cares. And, and um, he has similar training to me that I have in um, media, which is none. Which he, <laughs> he has a little more. He has some Phoenix broadcasting place that he went to for five months. But he's like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to broadcast. I go, it does, it's not showing, man. I can't tell because it, he looks like he, I think he's the epitome He's the standard of wrestling media for me for as far as a personality. Yeah, he's got like that, that. He's like Bob Costas level, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I put him at that yeah. level. Like, like uh, I, you know, John Smith did a great job at the Olympics, but I could have listened to Shane Sparks, too. I, I, yeah. you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt my feelings, but John Smith was – he took no prisoners with the officials. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Zero prisoners did not – care about the officials feelings at all it was it was yeah. amazing so i did like that yeah <laughs> so okay my next thing for you is i don't get jealous of many people but i get pretty jealous of your hikes and um you know how you transformed your fitness with hiking and walking that's something that's really incredible to me and, yeah and you look amazing you know and Thanks. i know you feel a lot better but what really jump started you onto the hiking and the walking and what got you to change your lifestyle? And I mean, you look like a different person now, coach green compared to Iron Man three or four years ago when I interviewed you, sure. I looked at those interviews and I look at you yeah. now and I'm like, man, this guy is living the freaking dream. I look at your hikes. I look yeah. at what you're doing activity level wise. It's incredible. How did, how are you able to transform yourself like you have? Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's sometimes it's 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 like wake up calls with your health right like so um you know um didn't have great 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 habits didn't have great lifestyle habits um in in, in terms of uh nutrition and fitness um and tried a bunch of stuff but nothing really stuck and and then kind of started walking uh and and it's a time that you can kind of quiet your brain Right. I think a lot. Right. Uh, I don't think there's any surprise to anybody. Um, and sometimes you're getting bombarded with a lot of different stuff. So yeah, I had to find something that 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 allowed me to I, I almost had to do. You almost have to do it on your own. Right. You know, you're going to get support, but um, it's only going to be sustainable if you enjoy it. And there's other value that comes out of it. So, you know, um, I think there's there's a fitness component to it, obviously, and, and appreciate your 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 words about the the the, the transformation here. Um, but I think that other 
element that I really get out of getting out into the woods and, and, and finding places that, that look cool uh, is that, I mean, I'd be lying to say I'm not thinking about wrestling then, but it's, it's very, it's, 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 it's very calm. It's, it's, it's so, it, like away from the noise. I always teach kids like, Hey, you got to find time to quiet your brain and, and just kind of sit somewhere or figure out something that you're doing that gives you some balance. Because if you're going a hundred miles an hour on, on wrestling and reliving every, you know, position and practice and, and everything like that with no break, that's not sustainable. Um, and, and I felt that way, right? Like, so, you know, like everything was like, wrestling got to think about wrestling got to think about wrestling grading some papers oh thinking about wrestling again how are we going to get better how are we going to beat blair how's this kid going to win preps and so i think that that balance component that that provides for me um is is one of the things that i turn to when i need to to to, to balance things out um and quiet my brain a little bit um and so those two things kind of working in concert with each other the the fitness component of it and the the balance component of it got me on the right path and then it's just continuing you know favorite hike man there's some good ones around here dude uh for sure um so probably campbell's ledge back home um in uh in in kingston area near 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 sam was this kind of one of my go-to's there um that's a good one uh, but I've done a couple here that are obviously going to challenge that. The one I did the other day, um, Anthony's nose with the picture looking down on the Hudson. I don't know if you've seen that one yet, but uh, I have good climb, good climb there. Yep. What did you have to do in order to build yourself to be able to do these six, eight, ten mile hikes? What did you start out at, and how did you have to build? And did you did you go nuts to start out with? Or was it baby steps? Baby steps. I started just walking on the the walking path near the house. There's like a little dike there in Kingston. So I get up to doing a couple of miles there every day. Uh, and, you know, I mean, that probably would have been enough. Uh, but like you said before, like cliff jumper, right? Like, like that got boring. That got the same. That got kind of, you know, you get stuck in a rut. And then all of a sudden you're like, eh, I want to go and do that again. Um, so I was like, all right, let's find some places. So I downloaded uh, the All Trails app. On Great my phone. app. Great and, freaking app. Yeah, incredible. Incredible. Oh, right? my God. And, and I, so I downloaded that on my phone. And this was right, right, you know, right around COVID's first rear in its ugly head. Um, and that's when I decided, you know, um, that I was going to pick some different pathways. Right. Um, so just kind of jumped in and started doing some local ones and then remembered some that I had done when I was younger. So started driving to those. Um, and yeah, then three miles became four miles, four miles became five. And all of a sudden it was, uh, you know, um, piling up the miles, I guess. What are you up to now? What's the, what's the, uh, the goal every day? A little different. I'm picking your brain. If you, it's, I'm, I'm not asking for everybody. I'm asking for me. I'm picking your brain. Um, What's the goal now? You know, it depends on the day. Um, I'm trying to do 12 miles on the weekends, you know. Um, and if that's one or that's two, that's fine. Uh, it's a little different here. Um, but, I mean, I can walk to the gym here, too. You know, it's two miles um, to, to the gym. And I've been doing a little bit more treadmill here because I just want to be in the room a lot more. Um, so, so that works well. But, uh, you know. 15,000 steps a day uh, minimum is, is, is where I kind of want to be with trying to get out and, and, and getting into some some trails on the, the weekends. Okay. Hold on. Now you make me I'm feeling okay right now. I'm feeling all right. Good. Good. Yeah, absolutely. So I've, I've been hitting soccer a little bit with the boys, you know, but that, you know, I'm trying to get, if I can get, you know, a 20,000 day once a week, you know, 24,000, yeah. something like that, 25,000. Those are those are rare. Those are once a month ones. I'd really like to get those. You know what I mean? Um, this mm -hmm. summer, I went with uh, Kelly Moffitt. His brother is uh, the head coach at Coeur d'Alene High, and his brother-in-law is Kevin Roberts. And I, we climbed Scotchman's Peak, and we looked at all trails, and all trails was like, oh, it's like nine miles. It ended up being like 11 or 12. Yeah. 
and the gain was over 4,000 feet. And it got challenging at the end, and it was, you know, the heat wave out west. And, you know, I like to get I like to get those more often, you know, than once a month. But where we are, we're limited. We're very limited in the sense of, of doing a big one like that here. You guys got to come visit, man. You got to come yeah. up to the uh, to the gunks and the, the Catskills and all the, the baby mountains around here. But uh, it's, they're manageable and the payoff is there, right? Like, like. You know, I think that all kind of fits that 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 whole thing. Like, stay stay climbing, like like cliff jumping, like you know, there's gonna be a lot of hard work getting up that 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 hill, but the payoffs there, the the the, the view is 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 worth the climb. Did you picture this four years ago? Did you picture this? Did you know that this was gonna be a thing four years ago? Were you and Ward talking? The early on, was somebody mentioning it to you? We're like, yeah, whatever, laughing it off, or were you like, no, I'll do that? Did you see it four years ago, five years ago? How long ago did you see this coming? Four, yeah. So I, I guess I interviewed with him four years ago, um, and I didn't, didn't, didn't wind up coming. Um, but I saw it then, you know. Um, and, and, and I mean, uh, just to be honest, I've had other college opportunities in the interim between now and then, um, but. <laughs> I mean, it sounds bad. I, I just knew I, I wasn't going to retire from Wyoming Seminary. Um, so once you know that, uh, then it becomes the best opportunity at the best time. That makes the most sense, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I left in, in, in the, the first time when I left four or five years ago here, I was like, you know, I'm going to revisit this soon. Um, it's, 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 it's such an incredible institution. And, uh, you know, when I, uh, when I saw Ned and knew that Ned was a finalist, um, I, I said to Jen, I said, look, like, you know, Ned's going to get this job and Kevin's going to call me. So let's start talking and thinking about it now. And then Ned got the job and then Kevin didn't call me for a few days. And I was like, oof, man, I guess I was wrong on that one. And I'm not usually wrong. Uh, so <laughs> just, just turns out he was on not vacation. wrong much. I'm not going to, I'm low. Right? I see I'm wrong a lot. I'm okay with being wrong. <laughs> turns out he was on vacation. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so he gets in touch with me right before Fargo. Um, and he's like, look, you know, um, why don't you think about what are the obstacles to you considering it? Um, let's, let's, let's talk. Uh, so kind of had it in my head when I went to Fargo thinking about, Hey, if this comes to, to, to fruition what I'm going to do. So I got, you know, a couple, couple of 25 hour bus rides to, to, to think about it. And I got a week in Fargo to, to, to kind of process through things. Um, and I get back from Fargo on like a Saturday and I interview on Tuesday and a, he offers me the job on Friday. So that's how fast it all happened. You know, after, after Fargo, your Fargo bus updates, Twitter updates, right? Twitter updates where there were things, they were legendary. It is almost as though you channel that Grail and Poe in some of those. Some of them were, were, were light and fun. Some of them got a little dark. Hey. Dark um, when you were down in the dregs. No, no, I, I, I love that bus ride. I'm doing it again, you know? You uh, totally I embrace do. it, though. I do. You got oh, to, right? God, like, what, what a terrible. I don't love those. You're a better man than I am. You're much tougher. You're much more tolerant. No. Listen, listen. You, if you're not looking for ways to challenge your mental toughness every day, when you need it, it ain't gonna be there, right? Like, like, sure. you know, like when I'm when I'm stuck in traffic, if I go down to the city or something like that next time, and I'm ready to like blow a gasket, I'm gonna be able to fall back on that 25 hour bus ride, and I'm just gonna be like, it's gonna be like. Oh, a calm's gonna come over me on the Tappan Zee Bridge. I think it's like the Cuomo Bridge now or something. Uh, You're like, this ain't got nothing on that Fargo bus, right? Uh, you know, there's not 45 teenagers singing like songs from Frozen right now. Cuomo, hold on, let's be clear. Cuomo the dad, Mario Cuomo, right? Not. Not the the the, the uh, recent resignation. No, I think they're about to they're, they're about to throw Andrew off it, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, Mario, it's the Mario Cuomo bridge. It's Mario, it's their dad, right? Hey, you know, yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> but no, oh. I love that ride, man. And that's that's once you you know, 
once you get out of that Fargo, the rest of your life is gravy, right? Like if you can survive that it's, trip. It's uh, brutal, man. I'm sorry. You're better than I am. I'm yeah. glad I'm not on the bus. You know, it, it, you're, you're just better than I am. And the one from Ohio is like 18 hours. Okay. You guys, you, are you guys leaving from like Philly? Is that why it's 25 hours? Uh, we left from Alvernia. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, you know, um, York, Lancaster, Lancaster ish. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. Yo, Lancaster's <laughs> over there, dude. Oh, yeah. my God. That is, oh, that's Amish country. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Where's so the coach. training camp? Go ahead. Where's the training camp? What, what, what it was at Alvernia this year. It was at Alvernia. Okay. All right. All right. So what? Um, you know, looking like somewhat. Hopefully, of a normal uh, season here, right? Coming up. What are you looking forward to most? Obviously, it's been a long, long stretch here, right? Wyoming Sem, yeah. right? You guys didn't do much anything last year, right? Yeah. You know, you know, what are you What are you looking forward to most this coming season? Uh. Well, we are road warriors this year, right? Um, so if you if you look at our schedule, we got some, we got like some one home days. match. I think I seen is yeah, one, one home match. Um, some some big matches on the road, and then let me tell you why I love that. Um, you know, one, uh, that's where you get better, right? Um, you're you're on those trips. You're 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 hunkered down. You're training on the road. You're doing all those things, and it's uncomfortable. Um, and, and it's not ideal. Uh, I think Kyle, Kyle Dick said the, uh, when he was talking about the Olympics, he's like, you need everything to be perfect to be the best. You're not the best. Right. Um, so we're going to throw a little adversity at the kids and, 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 and get them in situations where they got to go on the road. They got to make weight. They got to wrestle, uh, a, a really good kid, um, on, on, on that way in. Um, and, you want to know why? It's because that's what they're going to have to do to reach their goals um, in, in Detroit, right? Um, got news for you guys. Like, you know, um, as, as cool as it would be to have the NCAAs be in our practice room, um, that's not how it works. Right. Uh, so you're going to have to go and you're going to have to beat a really, really good kid or two or three to get on the podium. So what better preparation um, for that than to, to, to wrestle a tough road schedule? Right. Um, so you got to simulate the, the challenges that you're going to face um, and, and give the kids as much experience doing that if you expect them to to, to perform on the road um, when it matters the most. Um, so, you know, designed for that reason, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we, we owe some teams some some roads just the way the schedule kind of fell last year teams could come there so we got to pay them back and go out there and we'll have more home matches in the future for sure but right now coming off a weird year um you know having some guys that we feel are are going to be on the podium um in 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 march we got to do everything we can to prep them for that and and putting them in tough situations on the road and how their response will, will allow us to direct them um, when, when it matters the most. Um, also, hey, newsflash, important thing here. Who's better equipped to go fight battles on the road than the United States Army? Right. America's team, right? We're, we're used to it. It's kind of our thing, right? right. Uh, so, again, West Point's never been 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 breached. Enemies has never set foot on here, right? So we got that part covered now. Um, yeah. America's team is used to going out and fighting some battles on the road. Uh, so we're excited about that too. It's kind of what we do. It's kind of who we are. Um, so kids are, are, are pumped up about that too. So I got to ask for the hours up. So what is the trick, right? Did you use an air fryer for those wings? Is that what you used? You know, ideally, so an air fryer is kind of like a cheat code, right? Right, um, right. Are they, you cook the whole way okay. through on there or you just crisp them in there? Or what's the... Uh, I cook them the whole way through. Well, yeah, I mean, you just, uh, it's going to take you a little while and you're not going to get a ton of them out of it, but you know, the climb is, is worth the view uh, or the taste in this case. Right. <laughs> so, um, so any tips or tricks, um, that you can share. Sure. Yeah. Cook them to, to the crunch, um, a little salt and pepper and, and maybe spray them down when you put them in the air fryer. Look, like I've had fryers and you know, um, 
I, I don't think you, your your home insurance helps you if you spill like hot grease all over and burn your house down, right? So, uh, you know, maybe I'm not a risk taker on this one. Uh, that's my little my little uh, no cliff jump in this one, huh? Throw them in, the, uh, throw them in the uh, throw them in the air fryer, and then you shake on then you shake on the sauce and and enjoy. Yeah, um, absolutely. Good good passion of mine making wings. Um, you know. One of the guys, the, the kids are learning already. One of the guys got a salad today. You reach for the ranch dressing, you know, and he's like, hey, is this going to offend you if I put this on my salad? And I was like, no, you're, you're, you're good, you know. Um, but, yeah, ranch on wings is, I think it's in the Bible, man. Like, it's a sin. It's like, sacrilegious? Yeah, it's one of the, the, the deadly sins, you know. It's right up there with uh, with with pride, you know. And, uh, and Soft, green, whatever. Yeah, whatever they are. Hey, uh, hey, okay. So, my wife, we have a had a party, or not a party. We had friends over on Friday, last Friday, and um, she ordered wings, uh-huh. and to accommodate the little kids, right? She asked me, "Hey, what kind of wings you want?" I'm like, "Barbecue." I'm a barbecue wing guy, and uh, I know that's soft. I get it, but whatever. They were boneless wings. Are you still going to talk to me knowing, knowing that I eat boneless wings? Well, boneless barbecue wings at that? Yeah. Yeah. Double, double whammy. Yes. All right. Um, I mean, I would excuse that if there was nothing else to eat. Um, intentionally ordering them is, is a pro- it's problematic. Um, I would, if you were like under 12 and I'd be okay with it. We had a bunch of little kids. That's why she did okay. it. All right. All right. Um, more or less like to me, like those are some of the food rules I had. Like if you eat ranch or ketchup and you're over 12 years old, you, you really need to grow up. Um, so that's, that, that's, that's fries? one thing that's fries, fries, <sighs> I'm not ketchup? a big fry big... guy. Uh, I, I don't know if you love that tomato sugar water, you're going to figure out a way to eat it. Right. Um, <laughs> fries and gravy, man. Fries and uh, gravy is the go-to. Uh, um, boneless barbecue wings. Huh? I mean, so, I'm just telling you, we had a bunch of five and three, three, four, five year olds over. What do you they want? Got chickens in, they got chickens in Ohio. You've seen one before? Yes. So, you know, their wings have bones, right? Yes. I, I knew that. I knew I'm, I'm, I'm aware. Okay. I'm aware. I'm telling you what, I'm going to have to deflect here. I'm going to have to deflect and I'm just going to move on to the next question and ask <laughs> you, uh, how important is it to beat Navy? It's, it's, it's important, right? Um, there's, there's a tunnel on campus, um, that says beat Navy. It's outlined in some of the bleachers. Um, and and it's 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 a big rivalry, and pretty much everyone who's congratulated me on getting the job that's connected to the army is like go army beat navy. A lot of people sign their uh, their 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 emails and things like that. Um, but Mike Buddy, who's our athletic director, um, Ohio guy, state champ, Ohio, Cleveland St. Ignatius, major Saint league Ignatius. baseball player, major league baseball player, great guy, came over. Um, one of the first things he said to me um, when he came into the office to meet me was, I looked it up and your record against uh, St. Ed's really impressed me and I'm glad you're here because I liked beating St. Ed's too. Um, so I guess he was on the team that broke their streak. So the, he that- He did, that, 88, 88, they that, won, that they won it, 88. Yeah, they, they won deep. He runs deep and I talked to half about it and half was like, this guy was probably one of the best athletes ever to come out of Ohio, you know? Him and um, his brother, him and his brother. Yeah. Yeah. His brother was the head coach at Stanford. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he 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 signs his emails. Beat everyone. Um, <laughs> Is that what so, he, I love it. So I was impressed with that right away. And 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 K Dub Kevin is the same way. He's like, look, yeah, we want to beat Navy, of course. You want to know why we want to beat them? Because they're on our schedule, and we want to beat everyone on our schedule. So yeah, I mean, like you know, I'm going from what right now is. Is, is maybe the best high school wrestling rivalry, Sam versus Blair, right? Um, and that was a, a key part of that. And, and to both communities, that that rivalry means a lot at that level. Um, so there's an extra 
uh, uh, element and layer to that Sam Blair rivalry that that Brian Antonelli and I helped create and foster. Um, that that hopefully will will continue on because it means a lot to both communities. To, to one of the oldest rivalries in the country. Again, the, the history of the 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 Navy, the Army Navy football game, the Army everything. So yes, beating Navy is incredibly important to the West Point community and and, and the Army community, um, and it's something that 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 is in the minds of all the coaches on campus and all the athletes on campus. Um, but we can't use that um, as like a default. Like yeah, we beat Navy, we had a good season. Um, that's just part of the part of the process, and we want to beat them not because they're Navy. We want to beat them because they're on our schedule, um, and we want to beat everyone on our schedule beat everyone i love it i love the email that's awesome yeah. i love it because he's a northeast ohio guy you know yeah i would be like i was kind of like oh everyone beat navy beat navy beat navy then i got him from the big boss and i was like beat everyone i was like okay now i know what the mission is here yeah i like it beat everyone that's good yep <sighs> coach what's next for you guys where do you go from here where does where does west point go from here what's your first competition what's the training cycle look like between here and the first competition wherever it is so we're on the mat a little bit now. We're really trying to get guys to to think about position. Um, we're not running them up hills. We're not beating the hell out of them. Um, we're we're really trying to get them to 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 dig deep into our technical program. Uh, to dig deep into understanding position. To to have different places to go from different places that we wind up to think about places where we as a team get stuck. It's almost like an installation period um, of, of some of our technical program. Uh, and, and, and then, you know, I mean, like October, we'll start ramping it up a little bit. We'll go to a couple openings, but, you know, interestingly enough, um, you want to step back into the division one um, wrestling world after 11 years at the high school level why not have the first dual meet be at, against penn state at rec hall right um so so that's where we're open uh in terms of uh of duels um so go big or go home yeah why not right like what what else would we what else would we do right um you like adversity go. you're gonna have some to start there yeah let's do it though right um you know um great non-conference opponent great tests uh obviously there's there's the the possibility that some guys uh that we wrestle from that team are going to be um guys that that are going to be in our way in in march so getting them then um seeing how we measure up and then taking the season to get better and and, and close gaps that we need to close um but but you know uh we got a we got a sneaky good team this year um we're gonna we're gonna have some guys that are going to come out and surprise some people. Uh, and man, uh, the, the, you don't have to worry about buy-in here, man. Like, like people are bought in and it's just to, to you don't have to worry about anyone ever being out of shape, being out of shape is part of it's baked into the, uh, to the, to the recipe of West Point in general. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely going to be, a great opener and then you know got midlands on the schedule we're headed out to uh to iowa state uh duel them and then hit the cyclone open so we're really doing everything we can in in november december to to to, to get some some reps against the kids and then slow it down space it out a little bit more after that but still still wrestling those big teams Closing in on an hour here, Zeb. Do you have anything else you want to ask, Coach? I just want a quick rundown of your expectations. Like, what guys? Uh, Twenty five. We already know ninety seven and heavyweight, right? We already yep. know that those are those are both Ohio guys. Uh, J T. Brown and Sullivan. Uh, yep. Can you give us a rundown from twenty one twenty five on up? Who you guys are expecting? If there's multiple horses in a race at a weight, and who you guys are expecting right now to see big things out of? Yeah, it might be a little too too early to do that with 42 guys on the roster. I can tell you that, um, you know, there's 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 four guys that are ranked. Um, PJ at, at at 49, Ben at 74 are guys that are opening up in the rankings. Um, 
I think some guys like just on maybe the outside looking in, um, like like Ben Sullivan, um, you know, Marcus Hartman is ranked um, as well. Um, and, and, and so we got big, big expectations for him. Uh, a guy that not a lot of people know about, but good 41 pounder, um, Logan Brown, but, but these guys are going to get pushed in the room too. Right. So, you know, um, that's, that's the beauty of having such a big roster is that we've got a couple guys that are banged up that we haven't seen on the mat yet, but you look on the, on, 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 on the practice room and you're like, wow, it's a good team already. Right. Um, man, Good, good looking recruit. Um, just did a prep year. Um, is 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 Dalton Harkins, um, who, you know, one of the first things I said when I walked in the room with guys from from OPRF and and, and Bethlehem Catholic and Malvern Prep and and all the schools we used to compete about is, hey guys, it's all forgiven, right? Um, <laughs> so I can tell you, you know. <laughs> I can tell you sure as heck that uh, I am glad that I don't have to coach against Dalton Harkins anymore um, and that he's on my side, that we're on the same team now. Um, so He had the know, crazy like, Iron Man match. He had the crazy Iron Man uh, match with Master Giovanni, uh, right? Giovanni, yeah, yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. One of the greatest sports calls in the history of sports calls, if you get to go back and watch it. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, you know, my personal favorite was uh, was was uh, the same year twenty six finals. Um, but uh, your, your call on that one with the uh, cement lugger. Um, oh yeah, that's right. You, that's, you throw that one back in my face a lot. I like that. I like how you throw it in my face too. It burned in my oh, brain. Fuck. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. That's so, so awesome. You know, keep in mind, those guys are are, are prepsters. Uh, yeah, a frustrating year last year. They didn't get to beat as much as they usually would, but um, there's some some good guys that are coming out of that year, um, some good guys that are coming in direct. Uh, so, you know, um, I told Kevin a couple years ago when the EIWAs were at Binghamton, they had a great tournament, and I was like, look, like this is what I love about your program. Like, your default guy is the best default guy in the country, right? Like, if you take, like, the base Army guy, you know what you can expect from him, and that's the the, the, the best guy in the country. So now we just have to build on that. Um, kind of like a, a, I mean, like stat nerd baseball kind of thing, like a, a, a replacement player, right? Um, like like you, you know that you're not going to pin a lot of our guys, and, and you're not going to get bonus points against a lot of our guys, and every single one of our guys is going to fight and battle, um, and they're all going to be – if they're not ranked, if they're not NCA qualifiers, they're going to be in that next group of 10 guys that are on the bubble, right? There's no who's the 78th best, you know, guy in their weight class in the country. So with a base like that, um, you know, and then you just got to build from there. So Marcus and PJ and, and, and JT and, and Ben all coming in ranked, you know, um, is a good start, but we want, we want 10 guys, headed to NCAAs, you know, um, and we feel like we have the talent in the room to, to, to make that happen. That's awesome, coach. Thank you for, for, uh, I mean, I, I would like it. I like the cliff jumping a little bit on your part, mm-hmm. but I don't mind, you know, a guy just showing up there, maybe not showing all their, uh, all their cards too. That's not too bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Awesome. Jared, do you got anything else for, for Coach Green? No, I got to I gotta show this. This is one of my favorite hats. I've showed it before when we had Chuck on. Nice. Barbarian, app- Barbarian Apparel hat, right? Coming soon. We're going to open another store up here soon. So, awesome. uh, yeah, Josh is a good word up to everybody. To, uh, look, I told uh, I told someone in the rankings guys the other day, He uh, Earl, he had thrown up some stuff, and uh, people were already complaining about his, his internet rankings. And I'm like, look, my go-to is going to be like, if you underrank our guys, you just hate America. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, like everyone else would be like, oh, how come you are like anti this, <laughs> anti that, anti that? I'm like, well, if you if you if you rank our guys low, it's because you hate America. He was like, come on, don't throw that one on me. I love so, it. yeah, barbarian apparel, given given everybody the opportunity to to support america's team just, um, just got these in talking about ohio right we're ohio homers just got these in uh-huh. we're team yeah. ohio va yeah. those are so clean dude yeah, those are sweet clean. i think he's got the oh, mesh back on it too the mesh back yeah. and the little defense soap oh oh, 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 oh oh hold on hold on oh, 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 oh. got Steve some right Morris there and i got into <laughs> some defense soap talk the One of the first things that I packed for the trip here, man. Uh, 
was my sublime defense soap. So, yeah, I like. Oh, I love those singlets. They say like Ohio, Iowa. They're they're the the shortest states. Um, you know, so everyone remember. Everyone who lives there remembers how to spell them. Uh, but uh, <laughs> did y'all even have a chant like that? Like O H I O. Like you start them young, so they never forget. You're something uh, else. You know that you're yeah, something yeah. else guy's a real piece of work over here jared all right <laughs> you guys are gonna have a team shop through barbarian apparel the the army west yeah. point uh black knights will have a shop uh www.barbarianapparel.com coach green thank you for coming on the show tonight america's team is gonna open penn state what will that date be do you have the date off the top of your head or not um 18th november 18th november 18th, november 18th. November 18th. Jared's got him he's yep. got you that will probably be on the big ten network is my guess so if not, it will be at least streamed. You're going to have a national audience. I'm fired yep. up. I can't wait to see America's team compete yep. against the uh, the uh, eight out of oh, what is it? Nine out of the last ten. If they went, or wait, eight out of the last ten national championships have gone back yeah. to Happy Valley. You guys are going to go to the line against them, November 18th. Army, West Point. Black. I'm excited, Coach. You got anything else for me? Just uh, appreciate the opportunity to come in and, and talk wrestling and everything else with you guys all the time. Love what you do, um, and always appreciate uh, the, the partnership. How can we uh, follow you on social media, and where can we find you? Um, yeah, uh, Go Green um, is my personal handle. Um, some variation of that on Twitter, Instagram, um, out there. Uh, we've got... Um, army army wrestling on twitter um just uh google that look in we're doing some good stuff and uh look forward to uh the interactions and the engagement with uh fans all over the country thank you for the time coach thanks coach Hello wrestlers and coaches, I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.